Welcome everyone to German Tour Views. Today we're going to take a look at some Ghidorah open-ended spanners. Spanners are most often referred to as wrenches in North America. Specifically we're going to look at the 1500 CT1-6 open-ended metric set with one-third module foam. Though Ghidorah has been making spanners since their beginning, the recent incarnations only started in 1986 when they installed a hydraulic hammer at their Remscheid factory. Before this, Ghidorah spanners were forged in India for a period of time. Therefore, if you ever come across a Ghidorah spanner with India stamped on it, that is most likely from the 70s or early 80s. There was a recent article in a local Remscheid newspaper about the recent overhaul of a Lasco built hammer indicating the date of installation and that it can provide 125 kilojoules of energy with a 120 ton hammer. The article stated that the hammer went through an entire rebuild. Just to give you an idea of the scale of this hammer, we take a look at the Lasco catalog and we can see the 125 kilojoule model has an overall height of 6.5 meters or about 21.3 feet and a weight of 213 tons and is powered by two 132 kilowatt motors. I wanted to get this set specifically for the custom foam insert that's compatible with the Ghidorah 1578 tool trolley that I own. This 10-piece set comes in several forms. In addition to the CT module shown here, the set also comes in the ES tool module with part number 1500 ES-6, which is an ABS plastic tray in the same one-third tool module footprint. The set can also be purchased without the tool modules under model number 6-10. These Ghidorah spanner sets are also available with 6, 8, 10, and 12 pieces along with several variations for in the selection for the 10 and 12 piece sets. Ghidorah refers to their double open-ended spanners as their 6 series wrenches. This series of wrenches conforms to the DIN 3110, ISO 3118, ISO 1085, and ISO 10102 standards. All of the wrenches in this series have a 15 degree offset and the length is determined by the corresponding DIN or ISO standard. I must admit that I already opened up this unit because I could hear the wrenches rattling around in the box, so I reseated them to avoid additional damage. There is a layer of foam above the wrenches, but this doesn't appear to be enough pressure to keep the smaller spanners from slipping out of place. Ghidorah should take a look at adding some thicker foam, or better yet, a matching foam block because I foresee this happening to others who order the set in this particular form. This particular 10-piece set includes the following metric wrenches. A 6x7, an 8x9, 10x11, a 12x13, a 14x15, a 16x17, an 18x19, 20x22, 21x23, and a 24x27. The important takeaway here is that this set is inclusive for all metric sizes 6mm through 24mm. There are a couple of sizes in there that are very seldom used such as the 9, 15, and 20 millimeter sizes and are often omitted from such sets. But there probably will be one day when you have a fastener with an oddball size and you will need to use one of those seldom used wrenches. One thing that should be discussed is the chrome matte finish of these wrenches, which is much less common than the typical polished chrome finish. The catalog indicates the reasons for using this particular finish has to do with durability reasons. As to put it in their own words, quote, chrome chips are practically unheard of on matte chrome plated tools, end quote. I don't have enough experience with this particular finish to validate or confirm that statement, but I'm sure somebody can chime in. The finish actually reminds me a lot of that vintage Williams wrench that I got in a collection of wrenches from Germany. Each of the wrenches is marked with the size, number 6, the Ghidorah logo along with the labels Vanadium and Germany on both sides. The larger wrenches replace the word Germany with made in Germany. As you can see there are a couple of nicks on some of the largest wrenches from the smaller wrenches knocking around as it rattled in the box. Not really a big deal to me and it only looks like it scratched that top chrome layer leaving the nickel layer intact. To get some additional perspective on the unique finish of the Ghidorah wrenches, if we take a look at the Stavilla wrench of the same size you can see the stark difference between the matte chrome and polished chrome finish. In this case, I'm looking at the 20 slash 22 combination wrench. I will say that the texture of the Ghidorah definitely gives you a lot more grip, and I would surmise that it would keep that grip even after it gets covered in grime. Even though both of these wrenches are built to the same DIN ISO standards, which defines its head, size, angle, and overall length, there are a couple of minor differences between the two as you can see. The Ghidorah wrenches definitely have a lot more beef where the handle meets the head. This doesn't necessarily mean that the Ghidorah is stronger than the Stalville, but it is a significant difference to note. Comparing the weight of the two, the Ghidorah unit comes in at 211 grams or 7.4 ounces. The equivalent Stalville wrench comes in at 190 grams or 6.7 ounces, which ends up being about 10% lighter. Part of the reason for this is the double T design of the Stalvilla handle that removes a significant amount of material while allowing it to maintain its strength. In a couple of measurements, it looks like the tolerance on the 20 millimeter is slightly better on the Ghidorah unit, while the 22 millimeter is practically the same. Of course, to get a real comparison, one would need to test dozens, if not hundreds, of these wrenches to get a valid statistical result. Without doing that, one could pretty confidently say that the tolerance is at least on par with the Stalvilla units. The Ghidorah catalog does provide a chart that hints at that it performs 
performs much better than the DIN 3110 tolerance standard, especially on the larger sizes. As for a test, I recently used the 13mm in a configuration that you don't always come across, and that was using it on a bolster nut of a Philo screwdriver to get a screw off this vintage Davi Dot ratchet that probably hasn't been turned in over 50 years. Didn't really have any problems in the few uses that I've found for these wrenches. And you see, that's the thing with a wrench. When it does a good job, you don't really notice it, but you sure do notice it when it does a crappy job. Taking a look at the foam module that comes with this particular set, you can tell that some time was spent designing and manufacturing the unit. The thing I like best about it is the sizes that are etched into the foam to indicate the position of each spanner. I found this to be very useful when going to grab a specific size as you don't have to scramble around the toolbox looking for it. I also like the notches that were made for the smaller sizes to help keep them in place. I suppose this was done because of the size of the tool used to cut the foam would be too small for these sizes. Adding the zigzag pattern allows these smaller ones to stay in place by using the tension of the foam. Of course you don't absolutely need a Ghidorah toolbox to use this tool module, but it is designed specifically for their tool trolleys and mobile tool carts. In this case the module takes up a third of the drawer in this 1578 tool trolley. To finish up, the best reasons to pick up the Ghidorah spanners over other brands are the surface finish and the advertised higher tolerances, which especially makes a difference on the larger sizes. I think that Ghidorah spanners are underrated in the fact that it's not the first brand that you would think of when you need to go buy some additional spanners. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that quick look at Ghidorah's open-ended spanner wrench line. Check out the link in the description to the full review. The KC Tool and Amazon affiliate links to these products are also in the description if you feel the urge to pick up a set. Don't forget to like like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.